Yo, it was the whole life. Get up in the morning, go and make some money, steal loads of shit. Yeah, and then go brew raising. Yeah, have a big raisin. bag full of paint, and then just go tracks or yeah. Do you think the lifestyle preceded the 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 graph? I think it was a lifestyle. Yes. Yeah. That it was, was, yeah, that it was, was my life. a lifestyle. Yeah. yeah. Is it just like? It's, this sounds like a naive question, and I'm quite happy to ask it. Is it sustainable? Like, at a time, like, you guys were either living with your parents or you were in and out of something or whatever. But could you sustain a living being, you know, you know, raising the way you were, being a graph writer, that whole culture? Could you... Is it sustainable? No, I had to get out of it. Like, it was... Eventually, it just got too much. Like too much stuff was happening, and like because it wasn't just the graph, it was the drinking. It was there was violence. There was like all sorts of things. Um, there was beef between like other crews. There was getting arrested all the time. So to me, I just had to get out of it and mm. just change my life around because it just wasn't sustainable. I don't know where I would be today if I'd have carried on that life. It sounds like it got crippling towards the end. Yeah, I mean, there was one incident where something happened and it wasn't me that did it or anything, but I was I was there and it just scared the life out of me and I was like, do you know what, I'm done. And really? I just walked away, yeah. What was that? Oh. Killer Killer Podcast. Killer Killer Official Street Cars. Street Culture TV. Instagram UK Frontline. Box Killer Keller. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller Podcast. Right, here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller Podcast. Live and direct, central Londonisms. Central as you need to be. Um, big shout out to our sponsors, Hoddle Warriors crew over at the Crypto Moon Boys Hideout. That's some NFT business for you. Glorious day. I hope it's glorious when we go live with this. Uh, big shout out to all the regulars, the sharers, the carers. People were supporting and uh, sharing podcasts left, right, and centre. Uh, and if you don't know, get the Television apps free download, iPhone, Android for all your street culture sports. It mixes big docs, little docs, all that podcast that you love. I love to hate because we love you too. Hey, inside the house, we've got some legacy holders inside. This one's a big one. This one is not for the faint hearted. You guys will know them FDC and more, South's originals from the 90s and onwards. This is swag, scat, inside the place. How are we, kids? Good, thank you. It's very good for me. I don't really like talking. <laughs> I'm, I'm sweating as well, you know? This is always going to be a problem in a podcast with the good conversation. Yeah. There's been a lot of people, and I, I said this from the jump. We had a little chat before we started, you understand? Your name, people admire, trust this, bro. Like, there's a lot of love out there for the swagger. Busy of its time, were you? Late nineties, mid nineties, onwards. Oh, I started writing when I was a kid. Just, yeah. Yeah, about thirteen. I had a few tags, but I, I don't want to tell you what they was. Really? Oh, go on. <laughs> yeah, go on. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and what about you, Scott? Well, you know, when did we begin, girl? Um, I started off when I was about thirteen, nicking spray cans from school, just like tagging around, snap mm. everywhere. Mm. Um, and then I was friends with Meth and Dome. Mm. And then when Rest I... in peace. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Dome. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I used to follow them around on my little roller skates, mm -hmm. tagging up. And they said, you can't write snap. Somebody else has got it. Mm. So then somebody said, oh, because you're really scatty, just write scat. I was like, okay, then. <laughs> <laughs> so then I started hanging around. And like, as I was sort of out on the scenes, I was like meeting other people. And like, it just went from there, really. Really? So... So you were snapped before, obviously that's been that had been taken. So you were you south south predominantly? Um, I was, and then I sort of travelled like all city and just mm. ended up meeting like everybody. Mm. All city crew in the house. You were saying swag that that scat meant another particular term <laughs> of endearment. I don't think we should repeat that. <laughs> 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 oh, the things you do when you're young. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. exactly. I definitely won't answer that one. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Comment below if you know what the term scat means in other, uh, uh, I don't know, sexual circumstances. You were saying, actually, just before we jumped on, you were saying you never paid for paint back in the day, not even in the slightest. It really just wasn't in your remit. It just wasn't the no, dumb thing. I still no. don't really like paying for spray paint. Well, yeah, you're very... No, no I can't remember. I, 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 
I only bought spray paint a few times in my life, if to be honest. How frequent would you... What, so it's a racking game, then? What, oh, back then? Yeah. It's just still every day. Well, it's been my whole life, basically. I've been shoplifting my whole life. Shoplifting your whole life? And you, you've always got away with it? No, not always. Not always, <laughs> <laughs> have Has there been times? Yeah. Good times. <laughs> Talk to me about them times. <laughs> uh, I've been in prison for shoplifting. In, in, where did I go? Durham. Durham? Yeah. What, got caught in up New north Durham? Yeah, I got caught in Newcastle. I used to travel about. I've been a bull truck with and all that, but um, yeah, that's how I used to make money. Uh, I don't do it anymore though. Yeah, um, I mean, we're I talking about. I haven't stolen anything yeah. for um, about six months now. I I'd kind of turn my life around really in the last year. Yeah, you have, haven't you? Yeah. I mean, you've literally, you're literally not drinking. You're not, you're not doing anything, are you? Yeah, I was I've been a drug addict for years. To be yeah. honest. Uh, yeah, and uh, something had to change, you know. So I kind of took my life around, yeah. Yeah. I think when you get older, your priorities change and you start mm. growing out of things and you start mm. looking at your life a lot more different because you know yourself a lot more. Mm. So then that's when the sta- the changes start coming. Like, I've calmed down so much. Mm. Um. So, yeah, I think it's just an age thing, isn't it? I think I felt like I didn't know myself anymore, so I began a journey to try and find myself again. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. It's really interesting you say that. Obviously, there's been a, a, a number of people in their past since recently. Rest in peace to all the soldiers, everybody that's, um, that's left us. And then, then there's also the fact that when you, when you hit a certain age or a certain time in your life, you can't... It's just the, the wheels stop turning around and you mm. say to yourself, for fuck's sake, like, either I make a change or something's going to make a change for me, innit? Yeah. Mm. Fucking hard. It's, it's hard because the, the last thing you want to do really is make such a huge critical change that forces your hand into something. It's mm-hmm. so tough, isn't it? Yeah. Well, I just thought I'm not getting any younger. I think that's what it was. And something's got to change because I um, couldn't keep on going where I was gonna, going on. I was, who knows? I didn't think I'd make 30, to be honest. And then I got near 40 and I was like, that was when I decided I'm going to try and turn my life around. And then it yeah, took me another couple of years. And then, uh, yeah. Graf holds a lot of these, you know, demons, these qualities of, you know, extracurricular fun, things yeah. that you can do. But once you go down that hole, it's like it's like being a touring band as well with music. Yeah, mm. you know, it is. The backstage antics suddenly become your, your f- main stage antics. Yeah, <laughs> mm. totally. Yeah, I get what you mean now. Yeah. What, what was it significantly that changed your thinking this way? I think I just didn't like the person I'd become. Mm. A few people told me there's a, there's a couple of me, if you know what I mean. Oh, a, a couple of di- different news. Yeah. That's interesting. Well, you had mates that actually would say that. That's something... Well, yeah, it took fucking like 40 years for someone to say it to me and then I started thinking about it, innit? And then... Mm. It's like, wow... Started to see it in myself, yeah. Mm. Mm. Yeah, you almost like, had to absorb it like a sponge to to get to that point. Yeah, definitely. Shit takes time. Shit takes time. Um, you also wrote Candy. Yeah. Still do. Give me some stories. Give me some like old school stories of scat. Oh god, I was a little nutter. Really? See, I didn't really ever have any artistic talent, mm. but I like doing things that are naughty. I've got ADHD. I've just been diagnosed, so it explains everything. Every writer has ADHD. We've all got ADHD. Yeah, 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 We're yeah, all yeah. like, woo. <laughs> <laughs> but like for me, I used to just like everyone used to go into the yard and they used to get their ladders mm. and they used to hate paint. But for me, I just couldn't be bothered. Like, mm. colouring it in was just long. I just wanted to run up and down the trains, like, shh. <laughs> it was mad. But the thing is, because I was a girl and everyone else was boys, um, if the trackies come, I'd be the one who got caught. I'd be uh, one at the back, wait for me. Yeah, that'd be me in a heartbeat. <laughs> that'd be me too. Do you guys must have painted quite a bit together? Yeah, we did, yeah. Yeah, yeah some good missions. Some Like, these eras, this... I mean, I was just a kid. On the train coming up from, like, Crawley Way. You yeah. know what I mean? And you, you guys were prominent. The FTC were running it. Mm. That was my that was my guesstimation with what was going on. Give me some mission, Give me some stories. Give me some background good times. 
I just used to love being on the tracks. Mm. Like, being on the tracks was like, it just had a weird vibe, like electrical. Mm. It was just amazing. So whether I paint on me or not, like, being on the tracks was fun. Mm. And I was, like, really obsessed with, like, going on all of the lines and stuff like that. But I was a little bit dangerous back then and nearly got run over a couple of times. Mm. And up. my f flight or flight mode is, instead of running, mm. I'll freeze. So I remember one time I was up on top of a bridge, I think in, um, oh, I can't remember the place, it was near Cricklewood, mm. but I was on top of a bridge and there was a big jump and I, all of a sudden I heard a train come in and instead of like sort of running, because mm. it was coming quite slow, I was like, ah, jumped in front of it <laughs> <laughs> and then started running up onto the platform. Like just so many like, stupid stuff happened. It was really dangerous back then. It must be just like one big merge of a time of... Just so many. You guys were out every day? Yeah, or every, every week? day, every day. Mm, man. And it was like. I every... just said I was a vandal anyway. Yeah. I, I, I just like skipped in on walls. Really. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just. Everything I'm not supposed to do, if you say to me, don't do something. I'm gonna do it. Yeah, 100%. Um, That's why I kept on saying, don't come on the podcast. Don't come on the podcast. Yeah, don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> uh, I don't know. We used to, like, sort of go up and down the train, like, from, like, uh, Charing Cross to, like, uh, Hayes. Mm. And just, because there used to be loads of little stations with, like, shops and stuff like that. And we used to just batter the trains and, uh, and all the train stations, and then I just remember, I don't know, I don't know how I met Dyer and all them lot, but, mm. yeah. Uh, what was Dyer like as a person? I don't know he was a good person, He man. was a good person, yeah. yeah. Yeah, he was a bit, he was troubled, but, yeah, he was a lovely fellow. Yeah. Um, God bless him. Yeah, and, God bless him. Yeah, no, and, and Scheme as well. Oh, no, that's um, another name. Jesus. Keeps on, you know what I mean? And it, it was so much. So he was like, a younger kid that like, I used. To, well, I was kind of. I was a youth worker at a youth club for a time. But I remember when I first met him, he was a little shit. And uh, so you used to youth work. Yeah. Big yeah. that up. I used to youth work as well. But yeah, I used to go to the youth club first. Well, that's where I first met him. Mm. And I remember we was there one night, and uh, he was one me up all night. And I was playing pool on the pool table, and he was on the side other side of the window. Remember them wire mesh windows? Yeah. And I told him if he carried on, I was going to hurt him. And then he started winding me up from the other side and I threw the pool ball through the window and it hit him in the chest. It made, you know, like, through that wire mesh? Mm -hmm. So I went through that and then hit him in the chest. And then I remember I went home and his sister came out of my house with all these boys in cars. And she didn't even think I was going to come out. I remember them all banging on my door and I come out and I was like, what? She, she thought I was going to be scared, and I was just like, your brother was fucking winding me up for hours. I told him to fuck off. He carried on. I was like, why are you bringing people to my house? Like, what do you think I'm not going to... Like, I, I mm. don't care. i come out here on my own, do you know what I mean? What are you going to do to me? Mm. And then, yeah, we kind of become friends after that. Uh, that was kind of a bit of shock to me when he killed himself. Yeah, rest in uh, peace. Yeah, because he was like, he used to just turn up at my house and uh, I can remember another time with him as well. He was at my house drinking and that and then some boy punched him in the face and then in my house. Mm. And uh, I know, like, toe punching this kid up his ass out of my house. I remember everyone going, ooh, because it made a horrible sound. <laughs> it made a horrible sound and then... Uh, yeah, Tom chased him down... Oh, yeah, it doesn't matter saying his name. No, it's dead. No, yeah. Tom chased him down the road and... Um, yeah, Tom was covered in blood and then... He caught one of the boys and then... Um, I remember they had a vodka bottle in his hand and Tom took the vodka bottle out of it and smashed it over his head. Wow. And then the boy was like to me, why are you letting him do that? I was like, because you just like, come in my house and then disrespect my house and then think that you can beat up my friend. <coughs> um, yeah, but anyway, back to yeah the other thing. Yeah, Johnny and I, I met them because we used to battle the, all them southeastern trains and all that. And mm. then, yeah, they met me and like, introduced me to Sir. And then what it was like, look, if you stop painting the stations, um, 
this geezer I used to give us spray paint and let us paint all the stations. So we painted all them stations on them lines. I got commissions and Oh, was that out? Um, because there was Waterloo as well. Do you remember that? They no, did Foxhall, that? yeah. Foxhall, Foxhall yeah. that. I got nothing to do with that. And they done two, you know. That was all before this. And then we done all them stations like Catford Bridge. Mm. Um, what was the other one where Mood is? None of Oh, rest in oh, yeah. mood as well, jeez. Yeah. No, yeah. I'm knowing because he's a skater as well. Yeah, because oh. you're you're a king, uh, yeah, street. No, no, rollerblader as well. Rollerblader, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, he, yeah, Jim used to rollerblade as well, mood. Mm. That's how I met him. Yeah, fucking hell, so many people gone, man. Yeah, I know, it's actually crazy when you think about it, isn't it? Yeah, so anyway... Yeah, fucking, we've got to paint all them stations. I've got loads of paint for free, basically. But yeah, we used to just go to them, all, all the stations, like ballied up them, and then just write other tags. Really? And the geezer would to ask us if we knew these people, and we'd be like, yeah. And then he'd give us more paint to go and f- find them to stop them doing it. But it weren't, it was all just us. Oh, that's so sick. That's cold as fuck. <laughs> Oh, yeah, as kids, you take advantage of things, innit? Yeah, but that's just... initiative as well. There's yeah. a level of initiative there. Yeah, for real. Yeah, I mean, I hear stories about people doing Nazi signs on wi- or walls and then going up, taking shots and going, fucking look at this, we've got to get rid of it. You know what I mean? It's just these mm. tactics, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. FDC, I didn't feel like it was the kind of crew that would just put in anybody. How did you no. actually get into the crew? I was a girl. <laughs> I got in all the crews, easy. Weird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think you just had to be really tight with them. Like it was, it was a little bit of a sort of a, a niche group. Mm. So if you were tight with them, then you'd be in the crew. But it didn't really like outsiders wouldn't really penetrate you. Mm. Yeah, very much so. It, they were quite. They were older than us as well, so they were quite old school as well. So they had like their old school ways and everything. Yeah, almost like traditionalists. Yeah, yeah. they were like the ones to look up to. Yeah, yeah. What about you, Sway? I suppose I was just up for doing anything, really, innit? Well, it's the vandal mentality, innit? Yeah, no, we used to go out shoplifting together and all that as well. So we used to go and make money, steal spray paint, go and... Yeah, it was the whole life. Get up in the morning, go and make some money, steal loads of shit, yeah, and then go brew raising, yeah, have a big bag brew full brew. of paint, and then just go tracks or... Yeah. Do you think the lifestyle preceded the the... The graph. I think it was a lifestyle, yes. Yeah, that it was, was, yeah, that it was, was my life. a lifestyle, yeah. yeah. Is it... Just, is, this sounds like a naive question, and I'm quite happy to ask it. Is it sustainable? Like, at a time, like, you guys were either living with your parents or you were in and out of something or whatever. But could you sustain a living being, you know... You know, raising the way you were, being a graph writer, that whole culture. Could you... Is it sustainable? No, I had to get out of it. Like, it was... Eventually, it just got too much. Like, too much stuff was happening. And, like, because it wasn't just the graph. It was the drinking. It was... There was violence. There was, like, all sorts of things. Um, There was beef between, like, other crews. There was getting arrested all the time. So, to me... I just had to get out of it and mm. just change my life around because it just wasn't sustainable. I don't know where I would be today if I'd have carried on that life. It sounds like it got crippling towards the end. Yeah, <coughs> I mean, there was one incident where something happened and it wasn't me that did it or anything, but I was I was there and it just scared the life out of me and I was like, do you know what, I'm done. And really? I just walked away, yeah. What was that? Oh... I think we was in Cricklewood and we was out getting our paint, getting our, like, going out shoplifting, making money, and there was a whole big group of us. And there was a guy, I can't even remember who he was, and he was just starting on people. So we ended up starting on this man on the bus for literally no reason. Mm. And then he got off the bus and for no reason he bashed him over the head with a champagne bottle. And I'm really squeamish. I, I mean, I have seen a lot of violence in my life, but this done me. Um, so he had a cut on top of his head yeah, here. Yeah, because it bleeds bad with the head. But it? it was bleeding, but it was it was just pumping out, like... There that was blood was everywhere. Kilburn, Kilburn, yeah. So, oh, was there? Uh, yeah. That you was remember? I was convinced he was dead. Like, literally dead. We all got chased by the police. And then that was it. That was it for me. I was like, oh, my God, he's probably killed. I made you come back, didn't I, to check if there was any signs to see if, like... Yeah, have, you, have you seen this incident on... And it was like... It was the other way around, anyway. It wasn't people starting on him. 
I was downstairs on the bus by myself. I remember there was these two geezers. But yeah, there was about 20 people upstairs on the bus and I was, and these two boys started troubling me. And I was like, look, you don't want it because, yeah. I didn't say all my mates were upstairs. I said, look, you don't want it anyway. We was going to sell phones in that phone shop, innit? Kilburn. Mm. Uh, on High Street? Then, yeah, yeah, and then... Uh, yeah, I got off the bus and they followed me off the bus and then they were saying something to me and I remember I just went like that I was, and they looked behind them and it was like 20 of my mates saying, right, I mean, yeah, I remember it was a Magnum bottle with champagne and yeah, and he hit him straight over the head and I remember this blood just going... Pfft. Yeah, it was like disgusting. That. I mean, then we was all running It through. haunted me for months. Of course. Yeah. But yeah. But, like, well, no one deserves that. that. Like, yeah, but at the end It of didn't the, warrant yeah. that kind of level of violence. It didn't. Really? Mm. Even though it was set off by them? Yeah, because, like, there's different levels of violence. Yeah, but like, if I was on my own, they probably would have done something to me, do you know what I mean? So, I don't know. But, then, yeah, that was just it for me. I was just like, hmm. I yeah. can't do this no more. Really? Yeah. Because you, you thought there would be something over your head that... Not even that. Like, I didn't... I didn't... I started changing because... When I was younger, I just didn't have... I didn't care, I didn't have any, like... Oh, what's it called? Um, whatever Fear. would happen, would happen. Yeah. yeah, I just literally didn't care. But as I started getting older, I started to care about things more mm. and, like, start caring about people more and mm. stuff like that. And I just I just didn't want to be in it anymore. And the people that we were hanging around with at that time, mm. I just... I just started seeing them in a different what year light. Is, what year was this? What, what year? I think this was about 2004, 2004. maybe. Oh. Yeah, it was about 2001. 2001. Yeah, no, because I was in jail in 2004. Mm. I'll throw the question that you swag. Like, does... Does... Is there sustainability in that lifestyle? Well, to be fair, I've been a shoplifter most of my life, yeah. yeah. And until recently, things have changed, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, but it's just the constant having to go to jail or having to... Oh, I, to be fair... I ain't really had a bad run. Really? I've been jailed three times in my life, so... Out of a lot of people that I know that do the same sort of shit, yeah, like a lot of other... my friends or acquaintances... Yeah, been in and out of jail, but, yeah, I suppose... Yeah, I've done all right from it, really. Mm. Not that I've got much to show for it, but I've had a good time, yeah. I've travelled... But at the end of the day, I end up with... A drug problem, yeah, and then, yeah. Try to change, turn my life on, innit? What was the glory day? What was the glory time of, I guess, from when you you started graphing and this was at its peak? What was the, what was the glory, what was the glory day of, of your career, would you say? Because you can all have different heydays, don't we? I don't think, well, in my eyes, I ain't really never done much, you know what I mean? I don't know. I just... Like, scribbling on walls, to be fair, and that was it. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say... People say to me this and that, and... To me, I... I don't like compliments. I don't want people to say, I've done this and I've done that, because in my eyes, I ain't really done much. Mm -hmm. Just to be fair, I ain't. I just scribble on walls and, yeah, it makes me happy. That was it. Really? Every time, every time we're in the same vicinity, I get all the swags mates come at me at some point or another going... Have you asked him yet? You should just ask him, ask him. I said, I've asked him. Are you ask him? I'll ask him. You know, it's all the time. Yeah, you need to get him on. You need to get him on. He's got stories. Da, da, da. Dude, like, I understand the, 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 the preset of not taking the compliments because, you know, it's just your lifestyle. It's yeah. what you do habitually. It's what you've done without any kind of overthink, innit? Yeah. And you had that artistic talent, which not everybody else has got. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's why you get the compliments. I never get that compliment. <laughs> I don't know. I'm... Even though you're both badasses. This, <laughs> this is the thing. It's, it's a mad one. I think people also... Here's the other thing. I think people experience the likes of yourselves in different times in their lives at different, for different reasons. Like, whether it's travelling on the train just to get to work. Just to see something like that is like, oh, yeah. You know? Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, it's pretty fucking cool. Like, so to everybody else, it's like... You know, a lot of these people that watch this podcast, it's like... For them, it's, it's such a from the outside looking in, you know what I mean? And it's so scarce, yeah. you know, these conversations. 
I don't want to put like, the graffiti writers down today, but these ones that start now, um, a lot of them, I don't know, it's different now, to be fair. It's different, yeah. Like, I don't know. Do you think, do you fit in uh, with that? Do you think you fit in with the, I what's know, going on now? A lot of now? people buy the spray paint now, and I just can't. I can't justify that. <laughs> They're like Instagram graffiti writers. They do all the legal yeah. things and everything. Yeah, uh, there weren't none of this shit. I, like, I remember when my mobile phones fucking come out. <laughs> I had a pager for fuck's sake. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we've got, like barely got any photos. <laughs> no, yeah. no, that's right. See, I well, have uh, a bunch of photos, but they got took by the police, so I'm like pissed. Yeah, yeah, of course. But you used to have to like get them. To, you used to have to take them on a faraway camera. I hope they came out good, mm. and then you'd have to go and get them developed, and then pick them up. Oh man! And then yeah. there was no way of no replacing the photos. Someone in the Photoshop is going to glass you up for what's on there. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. It's all these different obstacles. Yeah. Where nowadays it's just like ping straight on Instagram. Yeah. And then you talk about all the colours are all there. Yeah. You yeah. mix or make the colours. You haven't got to try and hunt down the colours. And there's sort of... better paint now as well. Yeah. To be fair, anyway, I didn't really care about taking photos, anyway. I was just out having a laugh with my mates. That's what it was about for me. Yeah, I'm a photo taker. Yeah, really? But I'm a girl, so... It's just about being with my mates and doing something that I enjoy doing and having a laugh. Who were your favourite people to roll with back in the day? Yeah, Johnny Dyer, obviously. Yeah, he was good. Uh, Skag's a funny character. And then, yeah... I used to sang about with all them boys from like West London as well. Um, a lot of them are still my friends today, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I don't know. A lot of them are young, well, yeah, there's a few of them that are younger than me, but they're, yeah, they're my good friends, you know what I mean? Uh, mm. They don't know who they are anyway. Uh, yeah, big them I up. still speak to them. Uh, I don't really. There's not a lot of people I really have it with anymore, but the people I do talk to, they know who they are, and, yeah. Mm. They they do what they do, but, yeah. And they're kind of, uh... I think, yeah, a lot of people are happy in what I'm doing in my life now, anyway. Yeah, that's the thing. Compared to where I was a few years ago. Who was your favourite scat to be rolling with? Oh, my God, there's just so many. Yeah, no, there were so many of you lot. Yeah. I used to write Zone stuff, yeah. Oh, Zone. Yeah. Yeah, he was Man right. with a thousand tags. Mm -hmm. He was, like, one of the first I met, because obviously I knew Meth, then that's how I got introduced with, like, the whole FDC lot. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, he was really nice. He used to take me under his wing and, like, make sure that I was all right and mm -hmm. look after me. So, yeah, I haven't seen him for so many years. No, no, no one has. There's only a few people that I still speak to. Like, I'm really tight with Image. He lives around the corner to me. So. Oh, yeah, big up Image, yeah. Yeah, big up Image. Yeah. Um, we do a lot of work together, like, on the weekends and stuff like that. Um, and then I still speak to Turn. Sometimes I speak, speak to Plug still. Yo, Turn, he was at the jam the other, the other day. It was such a surprise uh, to see him. Yeah, like, he comes to all my family events and everything. Like, great I'm turn. still friends with him now. He says, and that's a name, man. That's a name of, you know. And Bimbo, she's like yeah, my Bimbo, best friend. Yeah. We used to hate each other in the beginning, but now she's like one of my besties, like That's everyday so friend. Cool. Yeah, it's mad. It Bimbo is, mad. is awesome as well. She had artistic talent. Mm. See, I was just like, and she nah. she just used to sit there, and I she used to get me so mad, like because everyone's like, she's so much better than you, like playing us off against <laughs> each other. I was like, shut up, I hate her. She's a dickhead. And then there was Pest as well, and, and Izzy as well. Yeah, it is Pest. You know what and I mean? Lush. Lush, Lust, yeah. sorry, uh, yeah. yeah, and Lush, Lush yeah. Lush, yeah. yeah. Lust was amazing. Mm. She was so good. It's crazy that there was so many girls in one crew. Yeah. It's a beautiful time, isn't it? It was, but we were all like sort of tomboys, yeah. so we kind of fitted in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then sometimes the boys used to bring out these girls with us, like who didn't used to graph or just wanted to come with us, and they were like, "Oh, wait for me! Oh, my hair! Oh, my, my breaking nail! <laughs> <laughs> come on!" <laughs> it was a real era of, uh, I guess there's it was generations as well, because there was Sir and Char and Jay and and, and these these characters. Then it kind of evolved, and there was. Yeah, you, you, I mean, of course, zoned as well, but um, you know, Avon, Vids, uh, Venger. Oh my God, yeah. Yeah, super. Yes, yeah, yeah, exactly. There was so many different names that kind of came from almost like a a second wave. Yeah. Of FTC, that's what it appeared to. That me. was the wave that we were in. Like we yeah. were the younger lot. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, totally, totally. Did you have a lot of, you know, was there a lot of expectations? Because obviously when you're all moving like a swarm of fish, mm. it's like you just get shit done. But was there, was there like, I guess the best way to tell me is mentoring. Was there, did, did the elders like see you guys and, and you know, steer course? Or, or was it just like, now nah, we've got the name, just free for all, let's go? Uh, yeah, it was just a... We used to get on the train. Like, you could just get on the train on your own and you could just go to Clapham Junction or Croydon and then you'll just bump into writers. And then the, there were so many writers back in those times that you used to just meet up with people. Oh, my God, you're him. I've seen you up. But then there was also a lot of beef as well, like, if people took out each other's dubs. Like, I used to go mad if someone took out my dub and try and fight them. And, yeah, really? I'm only little. I was, like, even smaller back then. And I'm like, ah, you took out my dub. No, like, it's just it was stupid, and there was just so many beefs, like from lots of different people. Yeah, 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 yeah. For like silly reasons. Yeah, I bet. Yeah. Give me an example of that. Both of you, give me an example of, of oh. where things got on top pretty quickly. There was knees. He took out my dub in Wimbledon, and I loved it. It was a piece, um, print on it for me, and I just coloured it in. Mm -hmm. But um, I was so proud of it, and he took it out. And because I was a girl, I was easy pickings. So if you went to a wall, and there's loads of big names up there, and you're a guy, you're thinking, right, I'm not going to take out him because he'll beat me up. I'm not going to take out him because he'll beat me up. Right, let's take out the girl. And so I, I felt like I had to, like, sort of fight harder yeah. to keep my name out there. So yeah. then, yeah, there was a massive beef with him. I hated the bones off him. Every time I see a saw his tag, I'm like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> so Beef stupid. is real. <laughs> I don't know, I'm not proud of so many things I've done, do you know what I mean? Really? Yeah. Like, mugging people off and shit like that. Because um, I... I'm a different person today, do you know what I mean? I don't like some of the stuff I've done. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I suppose, yeah. You, it's, it's a world where you can't let people take advantage of you, innit? Do you know what I mean? Mm. People see weakness, they'll prey upon it. Mm. It's funny um, you say that, because I always find, like, some of the more powerful writers, and I guess this resonates with what you're saying, is sometimes you meet, like, like yourself, Swag, you're a tall guy, you know what I mean? You're built. And there is a psychological response to that mm. with people. I guess the stereotype graph writer is one of dominance and power. But So it can work in two favours. On one hand, you can be the all-powerful, you know, no one fucks with you because you are that stature. Or mm. you can be the complete opposite and be so incognito it's that you're the last person that people would think you as a writer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's so, it's these two opposite worlds that, you know, make a graph writer progressive. Yeah. Yeah, no, 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 because there's some people that I met and I was disappointed when I met them. I was, you get this vision of someone and, you know, then you meet them and you're like, oh, fuck. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I won't be asking any names no, on that I one, bro. I won't give any names. <laughs> It's like meeting a celebrity. Should when you meet somebody off, who's like, really like big in the game yeah, and then yeah, yeah. you meet them, you're like, whoa! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like when I met Sham, like I'd heard so many stories about him and I was with like um, Dia all the time and then we finally met him and he Sorry. was like, you can be in DTB and I was like, oh! <laughs> Straight away I was putting up my peace signs. Yeah, man. But I, I felt like I'd made it in the world, you know? Like, it was like pretty good. It's a good feeling when yeah. you... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've had that before too. I've had it a bunch of times. Yeah. You get this feeling of fucking hell, like it's almost imposter syndrome, isn't it? In a way, it's like yeah. Wow. Um, yeah, man. Uh, I f I feel you there as well, Swag. In in terms of people that you meet, and all of a sudden it's like, wow, fuck, that's that's him, that's you, because their profile is so big. It's like, yeah. It's vast. Oh well, yeah, you get a vision in your head of people, isn't it? And then yeah, you, you got you got. I think. Yeah, and then you meet him and you're like, fuck, you know, it's nothing like I expected him to be. And then, like, we've, on the opposite side, like, everyone's heard stories about us and then they meet us and then they're like, oh, my God, you're scared, you're candy. And it's just like, oh, give it a rest, will ya? <laughs> <laughs> but they've all heard stories about you and, like, things you've done and stuff like that. Yeah. But then then when you grow up and you start getting out of it and then they start telling you, oh, I heard about you done this, I heard about you, you're like, oh, God, stop. <laughs> Reputation is everything, <laughs> Yeah, but graph, sometimes, like, when you get older, it's, a, it's not so good. Mm. That's kind of what... That's kind of the premise of this show, really, because I feel for, for all of you, 
both of you, I feel for both of you that you've, you've come to a point in your lives where it's, it's not only is it okay to talk about this stuff, but you actually recognise that there's that change is afoot. Yeah. In it. I think you have to channel your... Because I've, I've got that fire in me. I've got ADHD, so I'm, I, if something's naughty, I want to do it. So I channel that more into sort of climbing mountains and, mm. like, going away and, like, doing other things rather than sort of being naughty. Yeah. So yeah. It's, it's a case of just sort of changing lane. Yeah. Putting that energy, moving that energy over. Yeah. Like, mm. different goals, different, different ways of getting your kicks. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Um, is that where you see things, Swag? You, you've sort of switched around back onto the skating as well now, so you're sort of changing... No, no, I've just been like a person. I, I, yeah, I've done some horrible things and... Uh, yeah, no, I'm not proud of some stuff that I've done, but... Yeah, you know, it made me the person I am today, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? Um, I think we were products of our environment. Yeah. Mm. Like, the upbringing and, like just sort of the circles that we are interested in and everything like that and we were just products of our environment i don't have any regrets about anything i've done mm. like ev- even the bad stuff which i think mm, it's a bit questionable but that's made me into the person i am today and i had to go through all of that stuff to make me into the person i am today and i evolve mm. and i evolve and i evolve products of environment that's such an mm. interesting angle because it was the dirty south it's mm-hmm. fucking lawless yeah. Like, if you weren't getting involved in graph, there'd be something ten times worse that you'd be getting involved with. Yeah. It was an escape from my, like, childhood and everything, mm. and that was, like, my family at the time. Right. That was where I ended up. Yeah. What about you? Were you escaping anything at its time, Swag? Was there anything that was... You know, because, again, product of the environment. I'd be like, trying to escape myself, innit? That's it. Really? Yeah. To be fair, yeah. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I'm taking drugs to try and change the way I feel, innit? Yeah. Um, perhaps just because I wasn't sure about myself. I don't know. Yeah, or I didn't like myself very much. But then you never came across as that. You came off as, like, a confident, like, bubbly, lovely guy. Like, everyone who met him loved him. They thought he was great. So he never came across like this. Um, give us some, give us some classic stories. Give us some fucking mission stories. I remember meeting Case and Veco, and yeah, Veco was gone now as well. Uh, who was there? Yeah, Mood was there that night as well. <laughs> there was quite a few of us. I think there was about ten of us or something like that. Mm. Uh, it was like Cos, Esno, I think Sam might have been there, Dyer, Skag. And yeah, I think we walked from like London Bridge and we was walking back to Croydon and on the tracks. Like painting, and I think we all had big bags of paint. And I remember, where did we get to? Broccoli. We was walking through Broccoli. And like, we could just hear these noises in the bushes, and we was like... And then all of a sudden, this voice came and was like, do you do graph? And then, yeah, they all come out of the bushes, and you know, it was Case and Veco. I can't remember who else was there. I can't remember now, yeah. But yeah, that was funny. <laughs> Meeting people on the train tracks. It happened a few times as it goes. Mm. I've met people, yeah. I won't mention no names, but I remember, yeah, some idiot trying to take advantage. Well, I was just trying to mug me off in front of all his mates because he has a few drinks and thinks he can get brave, innit? Mm. And then, yeah, he had a dub somewhere and I went there and I was done the piece of it and the trackies come. So I left it. And then, um, uh, I come back the next night and there was still someone working in the building where the reach was. So I went back to my mate's house up the road and then I come back and the prick had fucking used my fill and done an outline over it, yeah? And written, this is my wall, yeah? So I went straight over it and written, no, this is my wall now and no one ever got to see the Gita's piece. Oh, yeah, anyway, that, that's resolved now. Yeah, that took a long time to resolve as well. Like, I, 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 just, I don't know, I'm not a noble person, but I don't know. Like, there's people, you know, like, they're not about this life and then they try and live it, but it's... Yeah. Also, it's like an attack on your constitution almost. Like. Yeah. 
Yeah. Like you oh, say. I did start to speak. Yeah, but yeah, no. <coughs> anyway, yeah, let's just not go into that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, what about, about you? <laughs> Oh, so it's just been so many mad times. I remember one time we went to some girl's house and there was a big group of us. I think it was, I think it was dire and that. Mm. Um, and we was walking down the tracks to get home because if we wanted to get home, we'd, we'd just jump on the tracks. Mm. We was in like Gravesend. We walked from Gravesend to Dartford and all we had was paint pens. So as soon as the rain came, everything was going to get washed off. It was a long old walk. And I remember we were, we started walking through a tunnel mm. and I was a little bit scared of tunnels, mm. but I had this like little bicycle flashlight that I nicked off a bike and it was like flash, flash, flash. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> yeah. yeah, so we just, like trains used to just sneak up on you. Yeah. So we got like two seconds just out the tunnel. Yeah, this mm. really long, scary tunnel. Then all of a sudden this train went, Whoosh-yum. we all had to literally dive onto the sidings, like literally like Superman, like, ah. No, I can't cope with that whole idea of like, Trains coming at I hear stories, man. As you the, can the adrenaline is like, whoa. Is that what does it? Is it adrenaline? Yeah, it is. I mean, I wouldn't like do it if I knew there was a train coming, but then afterwards, when it's happened, you're like, whoa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was just mad. I remember one time something happened in Wimbledon and it all came on top and we had to get off. I can't remember why or what happened, but we had to get off the train at Ellsford and run down the tracks. And I remember there being me and some girl and one of the boys that was with us, like, was walking down the tracks, but we couldn't go to Wimbledon because we'd get caught there, so we had to get off the tracks. And um, the only way to get off the tracks was, like, there was a massive, massive jump, mm. and, like, me and the girl couldn't do it. Like, the boy jumped over, and we couldn't do it. So the boy, was such a gentleman, he lay over the, like, the gap so we could crawl over him. Stop it. Yeah, it was, like, really cool. I have never heard that before, ever. Yeah, and I can't remember who it was. Ah, uh, yeah. I, I, it might have been Dame. I, I can't remember who it was, but I was like, wow, you're such a gentleman. Like, we had been stuck on the tracks Dame. otherwise. Yeah, it might have been. I can't remember. Yeah, well, I've read Dame. Yeah, I've read yeah Dame. he's cool. I haven't seen him for a couple of years. He's but... been on, he's been on. Oh, has he's he? Through, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've had a lot of FDC pass through here. A lot of FDC. Um... Clapham Junction, man. Oh, Let's that get was the that. place. This is some crazy business. Like, I don't know, there's just so much going on. I couldn't even imagine what that intensity felt like. Yeah, it was mad. You used to just rock up there on your own and just bump into people. You'd be like, yeah, anywhere you'd you go. About, yeah, at Clapham Junction and you'd find people, yeah. Yeah, like mainly Tays. I used to always bump into Tays. I'd go, Wimbledon, <laughs> Tays. Tays. Yeah. Clapham Junction, Tays. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> it's a hell of a... The access points must be so vast because of the space of it. Does it get scary? Do you ever see like near misses and shit in locations like that? What, like people getting run over? Yeah. Or anything, anything like that, where you're just like fucking like that. Or you hear stories, don't you, about people and how close they come to that. Yeah, it, it was scary. It was scary. But that was all the fun of it. I can remember being at Clapham Junction with Gaps. Yeah, and the train come and we was like hanging on the side of the wall. Um, you know, I used to, I just used to, we used to lay down next, like, I mean, some places the train's like there, and we'd just be laying down on the tracks, and the train's going past like that there, just holding on to something. What were you holding on to? What, just like ground? Right, whatever there was, if there was a wall there. Like clinging on for dear life, to like, ah. you know what I mean, hoping that you don't get pulled along by the train. I remember being somewhere once, and I thought my, tra- my mate was gone, we was painting on the bridge. And yeah, yeah so it was a night and yeah, fast train come through and I was on the other side of the bridge like, and I jumped down the embankment and then I was calling him and he just weren't answering and then all of a sudden he popped out from somewhere. That was quite worrying. But yeah, only for a brief second, but yeah. Does that make you? Does that make a bond closer with people when you go through them experiences? I think so. The friends that I've kept, like we've got a kind of... Kinship. Yeah, we, we've been through some stuff together, like some mm. fun stuff that nobody else knows about, like no one else has ever done before. So people can't really relate. So when I got out of the um, like sort of graph scene and started sort of changing my life around, but I'd be with people and they just, they can't compute and they still can't now. If I told them now, they'd be like, what? Mm. You used to do that, why? Mm-hmm. Like people can't really compute. But then when you speak to a grapher, and they've done all that shit, mm. or they've done it with you, mm. it's like, you 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 do have a special bond, I think. 
Wow. I mean, it's just so deep for me. Like, and, he, and, and also what you were saying about gaps there. And Venger said something, actually, uh, in his podcast of, of how he nearly, he was nearly, you know, he was nearly done. Oh. Because of the, that scenario, uh, running into one of the gaps, one of the yeah. um, uh, tracky things, and he just—it was just full of people who were all trying to get out of the way. Oh. So he literally just had to lay down and just looking up, just seeing, you know, trains. That oh, shit. Just uh, even thinking about that for me it was har- harrowing. You imagine being there and actually having that happen to you. It's some life-changing shit, isn't it? Yeah, we didn't really have any thoughts about, oh, if we go down there, it's going to be dangerous. It was like, oh, let's go down there and see. Like, yeah. And then if a train... We never used to think, oh, my God, what if a train comes? Yeah. But if a train came, we'd deal with it. Like, it, We didn't really have any cause and effect uh-huh. back then. Yeah. It's, I think that's... When you've got ADHD, I think that's something that you start learning over time. Like, yeah. right, if I do this, this might happen. And yeah. if I do that, that might happen. But yeah. back then, we were like... It. let's do it anything that's dangerous come on yeah swinging climbing up a thing swinging off a post just get the tag like nobody had any fear surfing trains yeah i never surfed a train i was always too scared for that but what was surfing train like oh my god they used to either get onto the back of the train or you know the handles on the side on the yeah. doors even worse they used to hold on to that so the train used to go off they used to be like that until the next station the hair all like windswept really? and everything, yeah. Did you say tag wild? Yeah. Wild? Yeah. yeah. Mad. I remember the old school, like, 90s, noughties trains. They used to have that kind of, like, weird grit on the top of them. It was like a blacked out kind of... I don't know, I guess it was... Yeah, no, they were white, is not it? Yeah, no, they were white. But this, I remember seeing... The, the, just the paint used to stain that black a lot more. Oh, my God. The old Northern Line trains were my favourite. Mm. So we used to hide in the bush, like, say, at, like, Golders Green Station or somewhere like that. And then every time a train came up, jump out the bush, tag our little tags, get back in the bush, wait for the next one. And there'd all be people on the platform, me and my friend. I think... we I'd done it with Flem once. Me and my friend sitting there laughing. Oh, my God, they can't see us. Yeah, we could be that flame. But we had um, the trains that's used to stain as well. That's that you'd know. Not though. force flame. No, that's no, not that Another one, one yeah? The clapping yeah. one. Mm. I haven't seen it. You used to like the mood, and that mood could yeah. be quite flame. There used to be a few of them. What did their crew used to be? It used to be mood, Cooper, flame. What else it used to be? That other guy. Um... Dems? No, no, Dems was. Nice, yeah. Yeah. What was it? An IBS or not? I can't remember. So I, I've forgotten so much of it. Like I said before, the timelines all just pattern up. Everything just suddenly clicks like a puzzle. It's beautiful. And guys, you know what I mean? Like, thanks so much for taking time and, you're you know welcome. what I mean? And giving your accounts and just where you're at in the world right now. You know? <sighs> and swag, it's great. It's, it's the fact that you're out there doing it. Like, I see you quite regularly now, especially in, in the areas of the eastern... Eastern areas, it's always good to see you out and about, brother. Yeah, no, yeah. You still it's enjoying not... it? Yeah, oh, well, there's a lot more I want to do. I'm not, I'm... Yeah, there's a lot more to do anyway. I'm not that old yet. No, you're not. Keep keep on going. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. we're the same age, so we better not be going yeah. anywhere too soon. Yeah, there's a few things I still want to do. What you got in mind? I don't know. Nothing I want to talk about, but yeah. Mm. Just, yeah, there's still plenty of stuff to do. Yeah. And enjoy it. Yeah. Make some more memories. Don't need photos, you can't take them with you. Yeah, yeah true that. Yeah, I'm not worried about that. This is all I can take with me, what I've got up here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's the future right there, see? Yeah. What about you, Scat? Um, I probably will paint something, do it illegal. Thank you. This year. Thank you. Um, because I do something once a year anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, yeah, for me, it's just like climbing mountains, like, bigger and bigger. I'm going to Africa at the end of September to go and climb Mount, I think it's Tubkul. Hold on. 4,000 metres. You climbing, you climbing hills? Mountains. And you're doing all that? Yeah. That's you... how I get my kicks now. Wow. Yeah, I'm going up to the Lake District in um, a few weeks and I'm going to do my first ridge. 
So that's I've swapped track walks for mountain walks. Oh my god, that's amazing! But mountains aren't very accessible when you live in South London, so it's yeah. a case of like, right, we'll do this one now, do that one now. Plan ahead. On my fiftieth, I want to climb Mount Everest. I'm saving the best till last. Wow. Or well, the biggest till last. I'll probably hate every minute of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nothing <laughs> fun about that. Yeah. It's like the prospect of a marathon just sucks. Oh, don't. I walked from um, London to Brighton last year and oh. raised money for um, a charity. Two days it took me. It was horrible. Yeah. Like, my knee was, like, swollen. My feet were fucked. It was It was horrible, yeah. But I had to complete it. Everyone was like, no one will know. Like, mm. if you if you come out of it, I was like, no, I have to do it. I mm. have to do it. Mm-mm. So, yeah. I'm always challenging myself to do, like, other, like, wacky stuff that nobody else does. Yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah, that's wacky, but also enduring on the old joints. Yeah. I mean, it's like swag you were saying about the uh, rollerblading. I mean, you had, you know, both of you de- definably street culture, and the fact that you go out and do that sort of stuff as well, uh, it's just got to be totally enduring on your on your ankles and your knees and your hips. And Yeah, I broke a lot of bones. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But you should see him. He just does all these flips and he like slides downstairs. He's I do not doubt it for Amazing, a second. yeah. I think I've seen a few videos in the past on your Insta. Yeah. But it's just a totally different kind of Instagram compared to what you'd expect. Like you really go in on the rollerblade. Yeah. Really hard. Yeah. No fear. But he won competitions and everything when he was younger. He was like a big name. Really? Yeah. Oh, he's getting embarrassed Stop again. <laughs> Get the different. Yeah, yeah, listen, the pixelation ain't doing us any justice right here. You see a little smirk coming through and it's like, yeah, see, what the fuck, you did that? Yeah. That's so cold. Oh, yeah, I used to be sponsored, yeah. I got paid, I, well, I didn't get paid. It used to pay for me to go places. I went a few places when I was a kid. And I, no way. Yeah. I don't know, I think I'm better at it now than when I was a kid. Or maybe I just don't throw myself at it so much, but... Yeah, no, I do. But yeah, it's just something, it's just something else I enjoy doing. People are like, why do you do that? And was, you're always fucking yourself up. I'm like, well, I enjoy doing it. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Mm. And you're good at it. Yeah. Yeah. I think a lot of people... Like, when I started doing it again, people used to say to me, oh, you back then, I was like, no, I don't want to hear that. Like, oh, and then a couple of years down the line, people are like, fucking hell. Can't believe you're doing all that crazy shit again. I'm like, yeah, it does make me feel good, but I don't like hearing it from people. I just, it's just for me. I just do stuff for myself at the end of the day. It's not for no one else. Mm. It's just for me. Um, but, yeah, but that's admirable, bro. Like, in the, in the fact that you're here talking on podcasts, it's like you're you're not that kind of character, but it inspires so many people to know that it, you know, it doesn't always have to be a photo. It doesn't always have to be. I mean, I think that's the message right here. It's like, just do you. Do, yeah. do it and do it your best whether it's climbing or whether it's skating we've made it wherever it is it's so important that people just get off the phone and do something mm-hmm. right yeah and also a lot of people will because I get it with a podcast like why are you doing that for you know on some evangelist shit what you're not getting paid for it why aren't you doing it same with beatboxing same with skating same with climbing it's like you don't actually have to have it you don't have to get paid for it yeah, you don't need a hobby. reason it's, yeah it's yeah, what so you, you enjoy, enjoy doing, yeah. just enjoy doing it and you have to live your life doing things you enjoy because life can get boring otherwise yeah 100 percent. and on that note we're gonna let you get on with yourselves yeah all right <laughs> Killer Keller podcast out, in was out of fashion. Swag, scat. Come on, FDC in the building, come on. We're gone. Sharing is caring. Remember, crime don't pay, but neither do they. Don't talk to anyone I wouldn't. Thank you so much, guys. Right, Big it out. Easy. Peace. That's.